Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an Abs Uncolored Legends deck featuring Kethys, the Hidden Hand, as our commander, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 3 mana 3 4 legendary elf advisor says legendary spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast, and then we can also exile 2 legendary cards from our graveyard, and then until end of turn we can cast the other legendary cards from our graveyard by paying their normal mana costs. So Kethys is very good early at helping us ramp out our more expensive spells, and then in the late game can also be an absolute monster by letting us cast all those spells again from our graveyard. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, which mainly consists of legendary cards. At zero mana there's Mox Amber, which is very useful in a deck full of legendaries, as it can make one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control. We've got a bit of removal with Swords to Plowshares at 1 mana, and at 2 mana Heartless Act, as well as D-Spark are some of the better instant speed removal spells. We've got Mikaeus the Lunark, which we can play early, start accumulating plus 1 plus 1 counters, which we can then distribute among the rest of our creatures. Then at 2 mana there's Into the North for a bit of ramp, alongside Mulch, Winding Way, and Grizzly Salvage, which are all ways to fill our graveyard, so we can enable Kathis' second ability, as well as finding additional creatures and lands in the process. We've got Catilda Dawnheart Prime, which helps us ramp, and we've got quite a few humans in the deck, which can then also tap for mana, and we also get a nice mana sink for 6 mana, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control. Arcane Signets and Cold Steel Heart additional ramp artifacts, and then Heart of Kiron, a legendary vehicle, that's a 4-4 with Flying and Vigilance, a crew cost of 3, so our commander can crew it, and we can also remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker we control rather than pay the crew cost, so that also plays well with all the planeswalkers in our deck. We've got the Meat Hook Massacre as one of our many sweepers, which also happens to be a legendary enchantment, so it has great synergy with Kethys. And then Kamal's Druidic Vow can be an awesome curve topper, as we can look at the top X cards of our library and put any number of lands and or legendary permanent cards with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. So this is a legendary sorcery, meaning that we can only cast it if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker, making it a great fit in this deck. And then Old Stick Fingers also has great synergy with Kathis, as a star star whose power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures in our graveyard, and when we cast Old Stick Fingers we get to reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal X creature cards and put all of those into our graveyard, so it can help enable Kathis' second ability. Then at 3 mana there's Raidan, which can punish expensive non-creature spells, can also be played as Protector Shield. Search for Glory can let us search up any legendary card, and can maybe gain a bit of life if we control some snow lanes. There's Egon, God of Death, which we can also play as Throne of Death for 1 mana, which is a legendary artifact that will mill the top card of our library each turn, helping us fill the graveyard for Kethys as well. Then there's a Varagoth, which can also tutor up any card to the top of our library, if we manage to boast for 1 and a black. Cultivate for additional ramp. Rishkar can also make more mana by putting plus one counters on our creatures, and then each creature with a counter on it can tap for green mana. Kambal Console of Allocation punishes the opponent for casting non-creature spells by draining them for two. There's Oath of Kaya, which is a legendary enchantment, which acts as a removal spell by dealing three damage to any target and gaining three life, and then whenever an opponent attacks a planeswalker we control, then we get to deal two damage to that player and we gain two life, so another great synergy card in the deck. And Alt Rutstein from Crimson Vow, also very synergistic, as a 1-4 legendary creature that at the beginning of our upkeep mills one card, and if a land is milled we get to make a treasure, if a creature is milled we get to make a 1-1 insect token, and if a non-creature non-land is milled we get to make a blood token instead. Then at 4 mana there's Shall I Voice of Plenty, giving our other creatures and planeswalkers as well as ourselves hexproof, and get another nice mana sink for 6 mana, putting plus 1 counters on all our creatures. Then we've got a couple sweeper effects between Day of Judgment, 
Wrath of God and even Cleansing Nova, which can destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments, and then the aforementioned Meat Hook Massacre as well, because our deck does have a very powerful late game, so we don't mind getting to the stage where we start using Kath's second ability, so anything that can delay the game is gonna play to our advantage, plus all these sweepers also play well with all the vehicles and planeswalkers in the deck, as we're not committing any creatures to the board. Then there's Gonti, Lord of Luxury, which can also provide card advantage from the opponent's library on a 2-3 death touch body. There's Kolvori, which can potentially help ramp out legendary creatures, but also the 2-4 can provide additional card advantage with the activated ability, letting us look at the top 6 card of our library to reveal a legendary creature to put into our hand, and then gets a nice plus 4 plus 2 bonus and vigilance, as long as we control 3 or more legendary creatures. We've got Questing Beast, the Slayer of Planeswalkers, with a lot of text, still very powerful. Then Sereth, the Viper's Fang, can protect our untapped creatures by giving them Hexproof, so great at protecting our commander. We've got Polukronos, which can fight opposing creatures, can also be escaped out of the graveyard. We've got Captain Cisse, which can tap to search our library for any legendary card, reveal it and put it into our hands, can even find those legendary sorceries, as well as Planeswalkers, so very powerful if it can go unanswered. Yasharn can help hit our land drops by finding a plains and a forest when it enters, and then prevents players from paying a life or sacrificing non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities, which is also good for us. Karn, Sign of Urza, can provide additional Karn advantage with the plus one. We've got Weatherlight as a powerful vehicle that can look at the top five cards of our library to reveal a historic card from among them and put it into our hand. And of course, historic includes artifacts, legendaries, and sagas, which is most of our deck. At 5 mana we've got another powerful legendary sorcery with Urza's Ruinous Blast, exiling all non-land permanents that aren't legendary, so it could potentially be a one-sided sweeper. God Eternal Ocatra, a 3-6 double strike that generates a 4-4 token with Vigilance whenever we cast a creature spell, and if it dies we can put it back into our library third from the top. There's a Vile Offering as another legendary sorcery that can put a creature or planeswalker from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, and then we destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker as well. There's Liliana that can mill additional cards into our graveyard with the plus one, as well as making a 2-2 two -two zombie token, and the minus three can reanimate a creature from our graveyard. We've got a Nissa generating additional mana and 3-3 three -three lanes. We've got a Renan 7 that can also put additional cards into our graveyard with the plus one, and then can generate some large tree folk tokens with reach. There's Kaya, which can protect our creatures with the plus one, and exile null land permanents with the minus three. We've got Trostani making a few creature tokens and giving other creatures we control plus one plus one. And then a Nethroi Apex of Death can be mutated for 7 mana, in which case we can return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. This also has great synergy with all those self-mill effects, also particularly synergistic with creatures like Polukronos, which have zero power but are still very effective. And then a Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, another powerful legendary vehicle that can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters a battlefield or attacks. At 6 mana we've got Demon Lord Belsenlock, providing card advantage when it enters on a 6-6 Flying Trampler. We've got a Liliana Dreadhorde General, which can make each player sacrifice two creatures, provide card advantage when our creatures die, and make 2-2 zombie tokens. Vorinclex Monstrous Raider doubles the amount of counters on our permanents, including the loyalty on our planeswalkers, so we can maybe ultimate them right away, and halves the amount of counters on opposing permanents. We've got Kogla, which can fight an opposing creature when it enters and destroy artifacts or enchantments when it attacks, can even make it indestructible by picking up a human. We've got Vraska, which can also destroy all sorts of permanents while making 2-2 two -two pirate tokens with Menace. We've got a Jani that can provide a ton of card advantage by revealing the top three cards of our library and putting all non-land permanents revealed this way into our hand so it can find creatures, planeswalkers and vehicles. And then we've got some of the Phyrexian Praetors here with Elish Norn as well as Shieldred, which are very impactful if they can stick around. And then finally, Primeval's Glorious Rebirth, a legendary sorcery, returning all legendary permanent cards from our graveyard to the battlefield, can also be very impactful. And the Great Henge, of course, also very powerful, providing card advantage whenever we play a creature and gets a discount equal to the greatest power among creatures we control. Then some notable exclusions include some equipment like Shadow Spear and Black Blade Reforged, which are quite synergistic in our deck, and Arvan the Cursed is another one, giving our legendary creatures plus two plus two. All those cards would be better in a deck that has more legendary creatures and focuses less on planeswalkers and sweepers instead. 
Then going over the mana base, we've got 5 of each snow-covered basic to go with our search for glory and into the north, as well as a whole host of dual lands in every color, and some lands that can potentially make all three colors, like our triome and our various fetch lands as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Tesseret the Schemer, so blue-black artifact deck, and my hand's acceptable. Got some good mana into the north for ramp. Probably no need to play the Ringheart Crest. And into the north can also find our snow dual lands. So we'll get the black white one. And then our mana should be great. Got some powerful curve toppers here. Rebirth, Great Henge. Probably gets Karn down to just start plussing. And then I wouldn't mind finding more lands with it. Probably gonna get Fabled Passage here. Alright, and then always have the option of getting Questing Beast if maybe Tesseret shows up. Alright, never mind. Questing Beasts will stay exiled for a while, although can always rebirth back Karn and get access to it later. For now, have a couple options. Could still play the Ringheart Crest to help ramp out Elishnorn. Or I can just go with Kethys. And that's it for now. Or play Colvori and that's it. I think I'll go with Kethys. Maybe gives us a chance of playing Great Henge. Essentially gets a 4 mana discount, 3 from the power, plus 1 more from the ability. So it would be nice to resolve a Great Henge next turn. And if they kill Kathis, I might just replay it next turn. So maybe they tap out for Tesserets. And then I get to go Great Henge into maybe a Colvori. It's going to be a bag of holding. Keeping up 3 mana for potential counter spells here. Vraska we can still cast, probably gets countered, but seems better than going for Great Henge since we can't play Great Henge into Colvori anyway. Plane seems fine. And go for Vraska, which will get countered. Negates is the answer. Looks like that's several counter spells to choose from. Just have to hope our opponent cannot play Tesseret and kill Kethys on the spot. Which they might be able to with a couple more artifacts. So next turn we can try for Great Henge. Catilda. Yeah, I think Great Henge is fine. The alternative would be Catilda plus Colvori, but much better to play those after we have a Great Henge in play. Potent might just be sacking Witching Well here. And if it gets countered, then we can always rebirth it back. This is the real card we want to resolve eventually. Right, opponent sacks Witching Well. Great Henge resolves. And we'll hit for three. Right, opponent can bounce Great Henge. Fair enough. And goes for Murder Strider, so shields are down. Coglas, not bad. Can play that now, fight Murder Strider, and then keep destroying their artifacts moving forward. Seems better than replaying Great Henge when I cannot play anything afterwards. Mm, 
Yeah, Kogla is a must-answer card for the opponents. And now we can even play a 2-mana Great Henge. Right, Extinction Events has to decide between Kethis and Kogla. Probably goes for Kogla. That is exiled, so wouldn't be able to bring it back. Right, still no unsapped land, which makes my turn a little bit less exciting. So, what is the play? I could attack if they block Oath of Kaya, could finish off Secret Door. Not super exciting, but might be okay. Probably just gonna replay Great Henge. Uh, gets Pact of Negation. Pretty happy with that exchange. Opponent has to pay 5. Still have ways to recur the Great Henge anyway. And uh, yeah, I guess it's time for Katilda plus Kolvori maybe. Or we can finish off this secret door. Nethroi doesn't have any creatures to get back. Now let's go with Kolvori and Katilda. And maybe keep Oath of Kaya to finish off Deseret if it minuses. Midnight Clock resolves. And Bontu's Last Reckoning, gonna blow up my board and leave them tapped out for next turn. That happens. Okay, probably just replaying Kethis here. And then really hoping for land so I can maybe cast a Glorious Rebirth next turn. Alright, there's my land. So if I were to rebirth, it would be pretty effective. So it's probably worth going for. And get to draw two. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Rien, Angel of Rebirth, some sort of multicolor deck. And my hand's decent, we've got a relatively smooth start with our lands. Fourth land means access to Yasharn, which is important. And then Heartless acts for a bit of interaction early. Once upon a time, a card we haven't seen too much of lately. Banned in so many formats. Finds a Guild Mages Forum. So, turn two, probably go with the Courtyard. And then, if they level up Ranger class, it's probably fine to Heartless Act a token. If they just attack for two, I'll take it. And then we'll see if we want to kill anything. Don't really want to play Rishkar without another creature in play. So I might go for my commander here. Casting Naturalist comes into play with a plus one counter thanks to Guild Mage's Forum, so it actually dodges my Heartless Act now. It's a little awkward. I guess we're gonna kill the wolf now. And then play Kethis. And 
And if they kill Kethys, we still have some 4 mana plays lined up, so it's not a disaster. Level up Ranger class to allow Naturalist to attack. Still have a Death Touch creature to maybe block it next turn. And still two red mana, plus white mana available for a Krenko. I see. So our opponent's deck seems quite aggressive. Can play Gaunty and Heart of Kiron now, that seems decent. So, can start here. And oof, some good options. Always nice to get an Ember Cleave. So that might be the pick here. Over Heroic Intervention. Sure. Play Heart of Kiron. So we can block with a 4-4 as well as a 2-3 Death Touch. And then we can almost set up our Elishnorn. Could have gone for Rishkar to maybe expedite Elishnorn by a turn. But this seems fine. Right, opponents moves to combat, sends in naturalists, which will uh, trade for Gonti here, maybe allows him to play Rien. It's going to be a Tome of the Guild Pact instead, another nice synergy card in a multicolor deck. Okay, Day of Judgment, a nice backup plan, but uh, probably go for Yasharn, get my green mana so I can also play Rishkar. And then where to put the plus one counters. Heart of Kirin does have Vigilance, so... Could potentially attack and encounter on Rishkar himself. How aggressive do I want to get? I mean, next turn Elishnorn cleans up Krenko nicely, so I'm not too worried about it. So this might be fine. And then we might not even need Day of Judgment if all goes well. Between Elishnorn and Embercleave we can deal a lot of damage. Alright, Brutal Cathar. Probably exiles Kethys. Nope, goes for Yasharn. Guess we can crew response. And Elishnorn can't wait to destroy Brutal Cathar here. Well, this is going to be devastating. Untap. Play Elishnorn. Our opponent's board disintegrates before our very eyes. And get to grab a couple more basics, because why not? And our opponent explodes. That took longer than expected. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing the Maid of Dishonor, some sort of vampire, maybe blood synergy deck. And yeah, my hand's fine. Search for glory to find any legendary we want. Yasharn to hit our land drops. And a couple sweepers in case they're putting some more aggressive creature strategy. Now, not sure yet what I want to find with Search for Glory. Dusk Legion Zealot for now. Right, we'll pass it back. Could just play Kethys next turn. Right, hungry for more hits us for three. That's not too bad. And a God of Death. So... Could even just search for glory for a basic land, which is not a fancy play, but 
It would mean I can at least play Yashar next turn to keep hitting my land drops afterwards. Whereas if I play Kathis, they kill it, then Mox Amber doesn't do anything, and we might be in a bit of trouble. So I don't hate just getting a land. So it has to be a snow land, preferably an untapped one, and one double whites. Alright. Drana. Alright, so could already cast a sweeper here if we want. Could wait a turn. But I also don't want to play something that dies to my own sweeper necessarily. Suppose I could go Throne of Death. And that's it. And then hope they play another creature next turn. I think given that we have two sweepers I shouldn't be too greedy. And just uh, clear the board here. Maybe next turn I can play Throne of Death plus another Wrath. There's the maid. And then now... Could go for Yasharn. Also prevents the opponent from sacrificing their blood tokens for what it's worth. And then I can still play the Throne of Death. And then I'm not in a hurry to play Kethys. And no need for Mox Amber just yet. Opponent kills Yasharn, perfect. So if we see another creature we can maybe set up Liliana minus four. Although they still have Hungry for more, which could then finish off Liliana. Which is less appealing. So in that case, probably a Wrath of Gods, play Heart of Kiron, which can then protect Liliana on the following turn. That seems better. And I could even play Kethys into Mox Amber and still play Liliana. Right, Hungry for more is gone. And in the event where our opponent was keeping up removal, we would want to play Mox Amber before playing Kethys. So our opponent cannot kill Kethys and deny us the one mana. And then between Liliana and Ajani, which are both great options. Maybe a Jani minus on Harvester, so they cannot kill Kathis as easily. Honor and, courage. and then we can crew Heart of Kiron to hit for four. Still have our Liliana. And if a Jani survives, we can start plussing to find more goodies. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Sorin, Vengeful Bloodlord. My hand is okay, not particularly exciting, but Weather Lights being a vehicle that can pressure Sorin is quite nice. And then I could Temple to maybe look for a turn 2 play, or get this Triumph out of the way. Right, Cold Seal Hearts, excellent. So probably want my double white sorted. And then I could play turn 3 weather light and then crew it on the following turn. Don't really want to play captain into 3 open mana. Weather light a bit more likely to survive. Grim Tutor. Not sure what that's gonna find. 
So next turn could go for Trostani, which can already crew with a weather light, assuming there's no source to plowshares in response to the tokens entering. Oh, well, Catra's also quite powerful, so it might be worth playing first, and that's still enough to crew the weather lights. So let's do that instead. And the opponent might be holding a swords, which now is forced to take care of the weather lights. So at least Soketra survives. So possibly what they searched up with the Grim Tutor. Let's see if we get to untap with Oketra. And Westgate Regent to play. That's not bad. So... I could go for Rishkar, get some extra counters on Oketra, maybe after playing Kethys. Is that the play? So Kethys into Rishkar. Could put counter on Oketra to hit even harder. And we would get to make two zombies in the process, that seems powerful. And then I'll put counter on Aketra, counter on Rishkar, and smash. And that also sets up our Trostani next turn to pump the team and deal a ton of damage. And a Vorinclex can be bad. I'll keep it. Time for Sorin. Does give Regent lifelink, so it might make it more difficult to race. So, assuming our opponent doesn't have any interaction, do we kill them if I play either Vorinclex or Trostani, and uh, I'm not going to do the math here. Just smash, and it looks like this should be enough, assuming no removal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing off against Cody, so some sort of non-creature spell deck. And uh, my hand's okay. Got Cold Steel Hearts for early ramp. Salvage to fill the graveyard for both Kethys and Shieldred. And Sword's a nice answer to Cody as well. Alright, so I could already play Kethys, also don't mind going for Grizzly Salvage here. And then... Find to main phase it. And... Creature or land into our hand. Probably happy to keep a land here, in which case I can take a temple. And then we'll have a nice full graveyard, including Polukronos, which we can escape. Seems fine. And we get to keep up swords to maybe answer Cody if that comes down. Meat hook massacres, okay, but outside of Cody, I don't expect too many creatures. Alright, so ideally if they tap out, we get to swords and then untap and do something powerful. Opponent goes for Skyclave Relic first. So, probably fine to play Kethys, even if they answer it, I can still play an Ajani next turn. Of course, getting to play Shieldred if they play Cody would be even better, but probably not gonna happen here. Alright, there's Cody, not surprising. And we've got a few ways to answer it, but playing... Shieldred seems quite appealing. Opponent will have to sacrifice Cody, unless they can make some tokens at instant speed. And then we'll still have a Shieldred in play to reanimate some of our creatures here.
Right, Day of Judgment to wipe the board, that's okay. And our opponent foretells the card. So time for a Johnny. Chem plus. Finds two goodies. And I'll keep up swords here. Don't want to shock myself to make it obvious that we have a sword. But uh, two life is probably not that relevant. D spark, good answer for a Johnny. And a migration path for ramp. Okay, so next turn I'll have access to 8 mana. So not quite enough to double spell Ren and Captain. Could go Kethys into Captain, even though we can expect more sweepers. Yeah, double spelling here. When our opponent still has 3 cards in hand. Might not be the best idea. As I'm playing two creatures into a board wipe. So I think I'm just gonna go with the run. And then make a tree folk to start applying a bit of pressure. Play this tapped. Opponent's just gonna explore. Maybe the foretold card is Alrun's Epiphany. Got a reach creature to block. Right, e to extinction, exiles Ren. That's acceptable. Could be a counter spell, could be a doom scar. Which made me not want to go Kethys into Captain. Alright, so play a land attack and then could play Sky Sovereign to sort of play around a sweeper. And I probably want the untapped land, so we can also maybe play Captain. And then if they have a conditional counterspell, probably want to lead with Captain. Opponent right, just has a Behold. That's acceptable. And then we can still cast our commander at a reasonable price, so we can maybe play Kathis and a few creatures from the graveyard in the same turn. This looks like maybe a Prismari command, killing Captain and Sky Sovereign, which would be quite effective. Practical research. This opponent has a pretty full grip. But at least we're diversifying our permanence somewhat. Still have a one mana answer for Cody. Right, it's going to be a Baleful Mastery dealing with our Tree Folk. So I get to activate Captain Cisse, which is a big deal. And there's a ton of options, of course. Including a Glorious Rebirth, which could get back Shieldred, Polychronos, Sereth, Colvori, all creatures. So it's not the best in the event of another board wipe. So I might want to get a Planeswalker here. Something like Kaya, Nissa. Some of our other six mana Planeswalkers are already gone. Demol or Belzenlock could also provide a bit of advantage here. Could go for an enormous old stick fingers to fill my yard. Also an option or Kamal's Druidic Vow. I guess that might be the best option here. And then x equals 7. And so yeah, we found some goodies. Get to Crew Sky Sovereign. And then even in the event of a sweeper, I can actually use Kogla's ability, pick up Captain Cisse as a human, and make Kogla indestructible. So that's another awesome interaction. And we get to see Druidic Vow in action, which was pretty sweet. 
And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Managed to outmaneuver the Cody deck. So yeah, we got to see our Kethys deck in action. And didn't even have to use Kethys ability too much, but plenty of those games, if they went on a little bit longer, we might have been in a position to activate Kethys and start casting stuff out of our graveyard, which is what makes this deck so powerful, getting both the mana discount as well as that recursion in the late game. So definitely one of the more powerful historic decks out there, given that almost every card is individually powerful, but there's also a ton of synergy. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.